Hello, everybody. We are here today with the Aspen Institute Germany Transatlantic Town Hall project in this beautiful city um, of Atlanta. And I'm here with one of our participants of the project, Latrisa. Latrisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. And it's a pleasure. I welcome you to the city of Atlanta. I am the CEO of Blackbird Strategy Group, and we focus on creating and designing capital deployment strategies rooted in equity. Thank you so much, and also for participating in our project. Um, when we asked you to participate, what did you think? Why did you do it? <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, what, what the conversations would be about. At the time, I was the founding executive director of an organization focused on closing the racial wealth gap. So a lot of the work I was doing was centered on looking at uh, national and international best practices. And so it, I was excited, actually, to be able to, to impart some of that information as, as part of the process. You are lucky that you live in Atlanta, <laughs> such a beautiful, vibrant, uh, dynamic city um, with lots of opportunities, but also some challenges. And one of them is um, including everybody um, and making the city responsive, responsible and livable for everybody. And that is part of your big job. How do you do it? Well, it really focuses on a lot of what we talked about today. Uh, it, it is about integrated ecosystems, about ensuring that you have the right stakeholders at the table to ensure that you are capturing the voices as well as the solutions. I happen to believe those who are on the ground actually doing the work um, and, and being impacted by the systems that are affecting them are in the best position to help advise and provide those solutions. And so my work is really around synthesizing, really doing an assessment, um, um, around that and then coming up with conscious uh, solutions and, and having critical conversations and being transparent during that process to then determine where in my case in kind of the the uh, transformation of my work making sure there's capital available for our economic development projects as we build our urban centers to ensure that there's capital available for our businesses and so they can grow and thrive and to ensure that in general people have access to the capital and resources they need to create the life that they want to live i think wealth is centered on uh, not just financial access but it's also centered around uh, intellectual capital um, economic capital as well as social capital and often groups are, are historically excluded from from that those resources and as a result they don't have the agency and control that they should over themselves and over their their loved ones in their lives in general and that must have been really difficult uh, during the COVID pandemic right Yes, absolutely. I, I started that role three months after the pandemic, excuse me, three months before the pandemic started. And so really jumping in, trying to save as many black owned businesses as possible, ensuring that there are resources available um, and not just financial resources, mental health resources, health resources, because often entrepreneurs are um, don't have access to health systems as they should. But also, um, there was quite a bit of turmoil socially happening during that time, um, with the racial awakening happening at the same time. And so it was a, a I'm a proud of the work that we did during that time. But it certainly was challenging, because it was layered. But the beauty of it is it gave an opportunity to uh, leverage data, um, as, a, as a great equalizer and to get past the discussion of if this is a problem, but more to center on and what are we going to do about it. So cities play a really, really big role for climate change, social inclusion, workforce development, and many other issues. Um, what keeps you up at night in a negative way? Where you, what, what worries you? But what also makes you really, really positive? Well, what keeps me up at night really is a couple of things. If you had asked me this question uh, a couple of years ago, it would have been all these resources are coming to bear. And I'm concerned 10 years from now, because uh, those who are sharing that capital are not proximate to those who, who need it, because they are not as engaged with the community and community isn't centered in the development of programs and solutions. My, what would keep me up at night was um, that we would have all these resources resources available and then nothing would change. And then the, the narrative would have been, see, we tried and nobody wanted to come. And really at the center of that is being connected. 
That is the critical part for our cities, for our stakeholders, for our communities, for our leaders. And I think it's critical now to ensure that we don't lose that, that we don't lose that sense of community, that we don't lose that sense of um, factual information and lived experience that we all witness. And because of how challenging it is, we become too fatigued to continue the fight to do something about it. Um, you know, it, because the pandemic is easy. And, and COVID is easing, uh, the issues and systemic barriers that existed did not magically go away. And so we have to remain vigilant to ensure that we all have shared prosperity, that we all have access to quality health care and education, that we have a, a fair um, experience in our criminal justice systems, and that we all have an opportunity for not only economic inclusion and racial wealth equity, but have an opportunity to achieve abundance overall in our lives in whatever way that means. And what makes you positive? <laughs> well, what makes me positive is that, uh, well, one, I live in a city like Atlanta where there is this, has always been this aspiration to be in these positions, regardless of, of what the data says. And that's the case for those who are impacted negatively and those who have the power to do something about it. So we are um, fortunate in that, particularly now that my work is national, I've seen um, a lot of cities, a lot of ecosystems where that's not the desire. Their desire is not to be inclusive in that way. And I will say that we are fortunate in Atlanta that that we want to be um, really ahead in, in all these various areas for all of our, our residents. Now the hard work begins mm -hmm. is that we actually have to do something about it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your wisdom with the project. We are really, really happy that you're part of it. Thank you. It's been so much fun and, and um, enlightening. I've learned so much. And it's also been um, an incredible experience in that um, there's certain very specific um, similarities, but also aspirations that, that in some cases, like 15 minute cities that you all have that I know we want and that would solve a lot of our issues. Um, but at the same time, we want to ensure that we don't become so disjointed that we stay in our bubbles and then we're disconnected and we lose a lot of the, the great energy and culture that Atlanta has to bear across the board. So looking forward to more conversations and thanks so much for pulling this together. Thank you.